Hi, my name is Patrick Headley and I'm with Lynx Consulting Incorporated. I'm creating a series of videos of why the typical user or the average user should install Linux on their computer. In the first video, I demonstrated the ease and the short amount of time it takes to install Linux. In that video, I also mentioned that creating the file systems is about the hardest thing to do in the install. So in this video, I want to follow up on that. And this is also a video for Windows users that are going to use Linux so you can understand the differences between the file systems. So let's get started. So there's two different definitions for file systems. The first one has to do with the underlying way that the files are stored in the medium. In Windows, you may have seen FAT, FAT32, NTFS, and the newest is REFS. These represent a progression over time of new features that have been added into the file systems. With Linux, you may see X2, X3, X4, BTRFS, and JFS, and there's others. These are all valid file systems currently in use, and you choose the one that will work the best for your situation. You may also have seen RAID, R-A-I-D, which is a redundancy system, and LVM, and that stands for Logical Volume Management, and that's a way to manage the partitions. The second definition of file system is the way that the directories and the files are laid out on the drive, and this is what you'll come into contact with most often. In Windows, you're probably familiar with drive C as the default Windows installation drive in the default location for almost every program, and drive D, which is the default for your um, DVD and CD burners. There is other drives like A and B, which were used for floppy disks, and the other drive letters are typically used for removable USB devices or um, file shares where the directories are on another, like a server computer. In Linux, the file system, and it's called the root, starts with the character slash. Everything else falls under that. So you can have a slash home directory, and that's where, that's like the base of where user files are stored. You can have a slash boot directory, and that's a way to separate the boot files from everything else in case something happens to the boot partition, you can easily recover all of your other files. And you might have a directory called slash MNT, and then another slash, and then a name of a storage device, and this would represent external storage devices such as USB drives and hard disks or storage devices on servers. This will become more clear in later videos as I show how to use programs, but by understanding this, it will be easier to understand how Linux works. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon.